My name is Nicole Schulman. I'm from Groundswell, formerly known as Groundswell Community Mural Project. We are an organization that uses art as a tool for social change. We recruit young people, um, mostly ages 14 through 21, to do after school and summer projects. Um, we work on murals, mosaics, and occasionally poster projects. Groundswell uh, um, formulates projects with a community partner. Uh, and uh, that we are in our 16th year, it's the 16th anniversary. And uh, we're here to talk about the Voices Heard Project. Uh, Groundswell was founded by Amy Sandeman 16 years ago. And is an organization that has not only supported social justice issues, but feminist issues. We feel it's important to have projects that um, allow young women to discuss, research, and do large-scale mural projects about uh, issues that affect their lives. Uh, actually, for the first time in a while, we had a Making History project as well. If you're interested in our work, uh, we're going to have a mailing list you can sign up for. Our website is groundswellmural.org. Um, and I'd like to introduce the young women. These are all youth artists from the Voices Heard project this summer. Uh, we can start at the end. Uh, please introduce yourself, so your name, age, school, your uh, artistic experience. Hi, um, my name is Jennifer Etienne. I'm 17 years old and I go to Brooklyn High School of the Arts downtown. Um, I've been working with Groundswell for about a year now and it's been pretty interesting. It's been quite a journey and it's taught me what I'm really capable of as an artist. Hi, my name is Dakota Austin and I'm 17 years old and I too go to Brooklyn High School of the Arts. I've been with Groundswell for going on three years now. I've interned there, and I've done a lot of murals and a lot of projects with Nicole. Um, my experience with art is like, I've been, I go to college, uh, high school for art, sorry. It's like four years now, and so it's like my last year, and it's really, it's really nice, and working with Groundswell has really opened me up to different art, different abilities that I'm able to do. I do public speaking, I talk around people, you know, I do art, and it's really, it's really opening up for me. It's, it's like giving me a path to like, you know, my future, so. I'm Erin Mora. I'm 17, I go to Brooklyn Tech. Um, this is my first summer with, uh, in Groundswell, and I love the experience. It opened me up a little bit more, and um, I hope to be a graphic designer. That's why <clears throat> I'm interested in art at Groundswell. Um, hi, my name is Kai. Um, basically, I went to school to be in human services, and I interned with the uh, uh, elementary school called PS15 in Red Hook and I worked with the underprivileged and basically I went back to SYP to um, reapply for the job and then I decided to just do something totally different and I I like Groundswell's name so I was like oh that sounds interesting and um, I started doing things more related to art and I changed my major to graphic designing and advertising and basically I want to just be in the field of graphic designing for now. So um, we have the best of the best here from our participants. So we have a large amount of amazing, <coughs> intelligent, talented young people um, who will dispelling misconceptions about how teenagers today don't care about social issues. Um, I'm going to begin with a brief history of uh, Voices Heard Murals in the PowerPoint. Um, the original artist was Katie Yamasaki. Uh, assistant artist Menchahat Ebron. Menchahat was also a youth artist who became an assistant artist. Um, these murals, uh, the first Voices Heard project, um, you may have seen this. This is on Union Street and 4th Avenue, 2004. It's called I Deal, I Dream, I Do. And um, all, of those are, all of those are faux painted bricks and each of the windows uh, deals with different adversities young women have to overcome uh, to face their dreams or to fight for their dreams. Again, this is another Katie Yamasaki mural. This is very close by, A New Day. Um, this was done in connection to the Elizabeth Sackler Center for Feminist Arts. Again, we have to thank uh, Liz Sackler for all of her support of Groundswell and the Brooklyn Museum's support of Groundswell. Um, this is from 2005. Um, this is an immigrant journey home. This is on a school in Sunset Park. There are actually two parts to this. Um, I'm only showing you the Voices Heard section, which is uh, the participants interviewed their own mothers and the mothers from children in this school and uh, to uh, research their journey as immigrants coming to the United States uh, from a woman's and mother's point of view. Around the corner, there was actually um, an all boys version, which describes the story of the fathers. 
This is also close by. This is on 19th Street and 3rd Avenue. Uh, art builds community, community creates change. This is actually a detail of the mural. It's much larger. Um, uh, sometimes it is quite difficult to photograph murals in their entirety. You'll see the one we worked on this summer. Again, this deals with how the arts creates opportunities for young women, and these portraits were actually, the women depicted here are portraits of the actual artists themselves. Um, this was one of the first projects for Voices Heard where the young women actually decided what topic they were gonna do. Very often, um, ground school partners with a community organization such as Black Veterans for Social Justice or Transportation Alternatives, Department of Environmental Protection, and they, in a way, request a mural to be done on a specific topic in a specific location. This was the first time where Groundsoul was able to self-fund a project. We had the partner of Fifth Avenue Committee, a really cool organization that owns this building, and they said you can do whatever topic you want. So the young women spent a long time uh, voting on and researching the topics of poverty, women in prison, military. Many of the young women actually wanted to join the military. And after doing a lot of research, this was during you know the, the Iraq war and the Af war in Afghanistan were not over yet. Uh, they heard just too many nightmare stories about how women are treated in the military, women being raped by fellow GIs. And this is visible from the uh, BQE, Brooklyn Queens Expressway. So you see, we are not government issued. Um, and it was a balance of being respectful to people who are veterans. They actually spoke to women who were in the military, women who had unfortunately suffered violence in the military, um, and all of those, uh, in the shadows of all those parachutes, uh, there are statistics on what happens to women when they enlist in the army. Um, this was slightly controversial, but we do, we, one, one part of our process is that we always have a community <coughs> sharing. Um, the youth begin their research process. Um, this is part of the Summer Leadership Institute, which is seven weeks. Um, the first three weeks, the youth uh, research and design a rough uh, mock-up of the mural. Uh, we share it with the community, the community gives us feedback, and then we continue on to the final product. Uh, this is one on a women's shelter, Informed and Empowered from 2009, again, Katie Yamasaki. And um, this is the first poster series. This begins my tenure, and Dakota actually worked on these series of posters. Dakota, you want to talk about this a little bit? Um, yeah, so I can see it. Safe Love Shouldn't Be Science Fiction. We were doing a project for Voices Her Visionaries, and we were doing posters for like abuse and domestic violence, and this is one of the things. And if you love me, you would respect my space. So we kind of did it on um, Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator, and it came out really good. We were kind of working with it. It was my first time working with Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator, and it actually, I actually learned how to do it really quick. And it came out really nice. So we had a lot of different posters. And our, we were partnering with Day One. So it was really cool. They have a really good community partner. Yeah. The community partner was Day One again. And uh, they're one of the few organizations that advocate for safe relationships for teenagers. Um, they provide counseling and legal services to teenagers who are in abusive relationships. And one of the obstacles they run into as an organization is that parents, teachers, principals don't take dating violence or uh, different, more subtle or kinds of abuse seriously in teenage relationships. Oh, they're just kids, they're just going through this. So they requested of us, uh, again, we had pre-sessions. Uh, the young women decided to uh, work with day one uh, after we had Joyce, a representative from day one, come and talk about what they do. And they requested that we do a series of posters they could give to different schools for free. Uh, small, accessible posters that dealt with the different kinds of abuse. Uh, that was quite difficult. Um, Dakota, was, it was pretty hard to come up because there was a lot of different sort of harder topics. Yeah. This one, you worked on this one, which was, we should show what positive love should be. And can you talk about why the whole space thing came up and the robots and... So it took us a long time to get to the, like get this whole subject, you know, in like one form. So we came up with a lot of different schemes, a lot of different mock-ups. And one, we came up with like vegetables and like safe love should be healthy, like vegetables. But it didn't come out too well, so we had to we changed it around. And I was working with two other people, and we flipped around, did this, did that, and finally we came up with this. And safe love shouldn't be science fiction. We're saying like safe love, it shouldn't be fake. You know, it should be real. You know, when you're, you're when you're in love with someone, it should be real, and it shouldn't be you know affecting you like and harm. It can be harming you, and you know love shouldn't harm anybody. It shouldn't hurt you. 
So this one kind of came up, and we have the communication, which is another way of, of safe love. It's communication and having fun, and just you know bring everything together, and just you know just loving each other, but not like you know physically hurting anybody. Yeah, there's you. I know you worked on like good communication with the yeah, little, little monster guy and the robot, robot. having fun. <laughs> Basically, things that should be. Um, common, you know, uh, uh, common sense that if you're, if you have a healthy relationship, it should be like this. You shouldn't have somebody, um, you know, have to, you shouldn't have to worry about getting your partner angry. You shouldn't have to walk on eggshells around them. You shouldn't have these cycles of getting into fights, um, making up, and then it happening all over again. Uh, they asked for a specific poster about the cycles of violence. This was actually rendered completely by. Um, young people in the program uh, in Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. So the one, Love Should Be Breeze, Not a Storm. This was difficult because they asked for different kinds of abuse. There's physical abuse, sexual abuse, financial abuse. Visualizing these in a way that was not triggering and not gratuitous, but in an accessible but still powerful way is always a challenge. Cyberspace, uh, somebody texts you 50 times a day, that's abuse. Hurtful words, verbal abuse. Uh, using money to control you. Let's say I uh, pay for your cell phone, therefore I'm in charge of it. And now we get to the project this summer. And um, originally, does any, do you, one of you guys want to talk about our original partner and what happened with that? Okay, so I guess I'll talk about it. Okay. So our original partner was Spoke the Hub, and it was it used to be a, boat, a soap factory, and so we were gonna do the mural in the in the parking lot of the Marriott, but we had some trouble because they didn't want us painting it at the, the their um their driveway because you know the paint getting on the floor and all the cars going back and forth. It was a big <laughs> deal, so we changed our community partner, and we had to we worked over it on the the mobile gas station on Flatbush and Johnson, mm -hmm. and one, Mr. Sai, he was actually the person that worked there, and he was really cool, and we, we finally got worked it out, but we still incorporated everything from our old community partner to our mural, like the bubbles, and it came out, came out really nice. You'll see it on the slides. Okay. I'm gonna go through these. Um, our original partner was um, uh, Elise, and uh, one of the founders of the Spoke the Hub organization, which is a dance center, and she's also co-owner of the 295 Gowanus building. So we began with images of dance, posing for some ourselves. Um, I'll show you part of the process where we have our sketches, we have a mock-up of a mural design, we have our community partners, we have board members from Groundswell. This is about three weeks into the project in the summer, begins in July um, and ends in August. So this is uh, the last week of July. We get feedback before we actually go on the wall and paint it. Um, like all projects, things happen. Our original wall fell through, and we were fortunate that Downtown Brooklyn Partnership found us another wall to work on. And here we are. This is a uh, Baker scaffolding. We start by priming the wall, and then we grid the wall by putting boxes. We have our small image, put boxes over the small image, and then blow it up with charcoal. Back of Kai and Diana's heads. This is on the raw brick wall. This is facing Flatbush Avenue, and it's on Johnson Street. So if you go around the corner, there's a mobile station there. So if you're filling up your car tires or your bike, you're gonna see it right there. Uh, these are two veterans, Casey and Rebecca, priming. These are the early stages of our mural, which we're gonna discuss at length. It's another angle of us uh, filling in, outlining. This is our uh, scaffolding. This mural is about um, 14 feet high, so this is pretty low scaffolding for us. Uh, if you're 14 and up, you can go on rolling scaffolding. If you're 18 and up, you can go on a super bolted scaffolding that stays there and can go up to 40 feet. So we work on some very large projects. These are... Uh, pictures of our mural, which is a title um, for those who speak and have yet to speak, which, who came up with that title again? I. Jennifer. Okay. So, uh, ladies, um, Kai, would you like to talk a little bit about the topic of our mural? Okay, so the topic mm -hmm. of our mural is about women uh, connecting together 
bridging communities across the world. So with our mural, we try to incorporate different types of women from different types of parts of the uh, world. So we had Aung San Suu Kyi, we had King Peggy, we had Vendetta Shiva, and um, we also used the Da Vinci Code um, picture. I know you guys know the picture with the arms rotating and stuff like that. And um, that painting was kind of incorporated with the lady, uh, the brown skinned lady breaking out of the raindrop, you know, like trying to express that we could break boundaries and make a change to that. So um, the Da Vinci Code was actually pretty cool that she was, I just realized, and mm -hmm. um, did some research on it. the Da Vinci being right. um, yeah. the Vitruvius Man, yeah. the Canon mm -hmm. Proportions, which was the inspiration for the um, right. um, logo of um, Spoke the Hub. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I did some research on that, and I found out that um, it was a very how do I say this? A picture where a man is breaking out of his boundaries about um, gender roles, basically. I, I have a friend that's like into art and a lot of things, and he told me like it was like a spiritual enlightenment for a man to break out of the stereotypical things. And that's maybe his way of interpreting it. But I interpreted it in the mural that way, too. And we also um, tried to use the term bridging the communities together, literally. Um, our mural is right next to the Brooklyn uh, Manhattan Bridge. So, I mean, it goes together very smoothly, and uh, we chose colors that are very vibrant, and I, um, I looked up and did some re research about most uh, feminism. Our logo would be the purple, you know, ribbon. So we try to use a lot of um, vibrant colors like purple and indigo and um, blue, you know, and we didn't want to make it look a little too depressing with blue colors and sadness, so we try to make it show the progression of going from darker colors to lighter colors and breaking free. And, um, that's why we have like the orange part at the end with the bridge, you know? And ultimately our goal is to help younger women wake up and realize and that, you know, you may not have a voice right now, but there are people that didn't have a voice and gained a voice to speak and you could do that too, you know? So we're skipping ahead a little bit, but since we have the mural up for those who speak and have yet to speak, which is from uh, Jennifer's, one of Jennifer's poems, uh, do you guys want to describe the imagery, um, where the bubbles came from, where the tears came from. Uh, viewing the mural, it goes from this is the beginning, and it goes towards the middle. This is part of our dedication, where we have the tears and water and the braid going through. And then begins portraits of well-known women activists. And then this is the end, where um, we have the bridge, bridging women of an international community. We go back a little bit around the corner you get that part, which is sort of our teaser. So, um, well, this, the bubbles came about because um, Spoke the Hub, prior to it becoming Spoke the Hub, it was a soap company. And um, Elise, uh, the lady in charge, she kind of wanted to incorporate um, its past into the mural when we were still working on um, her wall. So, um. <coughs> The bubbles, they, they represented a lot more than just a soap factory, but they represented like being whole and like someone being trapped inside something and like being inside that image that society has put out for you and you want to break out of the bubble, you want to break out of that image because you want to be yourself, you don't want to be confined to what everyone else is telling you to be. So they kind of, they expressed a lot of stuff. Like if you look at a bubble, you know, there are a lot of, there's a lot of things you can take from it. It can be happy, it can be sad, it can be bright, you know, it can pop and just ruin everything. But when you look at it, it's really our image, our whole reason behind it, which is to break out of that image that society's put on you and just to be yourself and be free, so. Would you like to add to that? Um, I want to talk about the tears. In the tears, you see different issues that women face. And in one of them, you see um, self-esteem issues. Um, in the beginning of the program, they, the people in grounds will give us each, each day we came in, they gave us a topic. And we had to draw what we thought. The first thing that came to mind when we saw that topic, and the woman standing in the mirror was one of the drawings that one of our workers did, and we wanted to incorporate that. And um, the one with the woman with the lock over her mouth was incorporated from the comadres of El Salvador, I think. Mm -hmm. um, the comadres of El Salvador is um, a group where is a group of all women, where at a time. The government was keeping all women silent, and they were taking their family members away. Anyone who tried to revolt against them was taken away, and any woman that tried to revolt against them was tortured and raped. And 
they would just kept silent for so long and they wanted to incorporate that in the mural. So basically each tier shows the struggles that they went through. And as the mural goes this way, you see the brighter colors and them breaking out of their bubbles and bringing out of their tears and showing the positive things that women can do. So. Yeah, um, again, to elaborate on that, um, we often have um, expert speakers, women activists come in and uh, talk to us as part of our research about uh, different topics. Um, our beginning loose topic was Women as International Community. Um, a group called the Friends of Comandres El Salvador came in to talk to us about the continuing struggles of the mothers of the disappeared and assassinated from El Salvador. Uh, and um, one was uh, Mara Kamaska, who's an activist who's been to El Salvador many times, and her partner, Eliezer Castillo, whose father was disappeared. Um, and they're talking about how these women in El Salvador are still fighting to find out what happened to their families years after the Civil War ended, uh, fighting for justice, finding out. Um, you may have heard of Monsignor Oscar Romero, who was assassinated. They want to reopen that case. So they came in and talked to us about their struggles uh, in the uh, it's a necessity of international solidarity. So when you see a lot of images of women with a white headscarf and a black dress and even a loudspeaker, that is inspired by Comadre El Salvador. Um, anybody want to talk about some images? We don't have too many great pictures of them of some of the women who are uh, depicted in the mural, some of the women activists. Maybe one or two. I'm trying to remember. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll talk about King Peggy. Um, King Peggy, this is a really interesting case for me. She's um, uh, from Ghana originally, and her family um, had some what we would call royalty tied to her, and she didn't know. Um, so she was actually living here in Washington, D.C., and I believe she worked um, at the Ghana Embassy. Yeah, she worked at the Ambassador. What is it? The uh, Embassy of Ghana. Yeah. And um, she gets a call from Ghana here in the United States, like, you're a king, uh, come back, you know? And um, basically, when uh, royalty in African traditions, like say a king or a queen dies, the next child or the ge next generation takes that role. And um, she had this, there's this little town in Ghana, and um, basically she decided to go back, and she's the king, and she's helping her people out, you know, and um, doing a lot of good things for that town, you know. And the thing I liked about it best is that it's a woman, she's a king. A woman could take up roles that mostly men fulfill and do it just as great, you know, and um, that's very inspiring to me. And I didn't know anything about her. I never even knew that a woman could be a king. So I think um, when we got questions from people passing by in the street looking at the mural, like, who's that? And we told them about it. Some didn't even believe us. Like, you know, they were so surprised. And that's how I felt. So um, with this mural, it helps create a lot of knowledge for people that didn't know about these women. So. Um, so, um, maybe we could discuss some of the challenges and successes we had while working on this mural, inside, outside, designing, coming up with a concept from this really huge <coughs> topic, women as an international community, working outside in the heat, and so on. Okay, so we had many challenges, but we overcame them, obviously. Um, <laughs> our first challenge was moving the mural from Marriott to, well, actually that was the first challenge, but... Our first challenge was when we came in, there were certain you know, things we had to draw pictures about. And if you look at the pictures that we drew in the sketches, you wouldn't think it would turn into that mural. Like we did flags, we did sketches of people, stick figures, you know, but we were all, it was all coming and formulating together to, to, this, one, to this one mural and to women who's people to speak and yet to speak. And so it was really difficult, you know, coming up with the whole topic behind it and the colors. And so we use the color purple because purple is the is a feminist color, and we use a lot of different people. Um, Alice, is Alice? Alice. Uh, Elise, Elise, Elise. Elise. We used um, yeah. her braid because she was working for the Spoke the Hub. She's our community partner, so we used her inside the mural. We used her long braid to go throughout the whole mural, and the bubbles to show freedom. And it was, you know, it was kind of hot outside. You know, all the time it was like really hot. And so building the scaffolding and the heat, and it was like an all-girls group. And that's what made it so cool, was that we came together as girls, as females, as one. And we built that scaffold. 
and we worked hard and we painted and we sketched and we marked the whole wall, we primed the wall and to see women come together and stuff like that, it's like really cool. And the heat was very bad, but we had um, our community partner, Dr. Uh, Mr. Sai, he came out and gave us like a cooler full of water and like water bottles and ice and he was really cool. And Mr. Sai is the owner of the gas station. The owner of the gas station, yeah. Mr. Sai. And it was, it came out, we came, we pulled through, we pulled through. There's a lot of things, a lot of troubles, you know, and actually, like to work with a bunch of girls, you would think that maybe there'd be drama going on, but it wasn't, it wasn't. Like we all worked together as one and we came together and we did it and we pulled through. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I kind of like a challenge. That's what I like. So um, the challenges to me weren't that challenging. I would just say like the rain, the summer we had a lot of rain. Every time it would rain, we would have to like, you know, wrap up and we, was, we were still painting. like. Even if it was drizzling, that's not a problem, but like there was a time where it was like a monsoon and just rain just came down out of nowhere mm -hmm. and all the stuff got wet, you know, and then to come back the next day and do it over again, fix whatever, it got messed up and paint spills. Yeah, I was underneath the scaffolding one time, paint fell on my, you know, clothes. That, that to me, it was all fun. That was part of the experience, um, you know, and um, like she said, the scaffolding, that was pretty heavy and like trying to break it down. For me, I'm a very small person, so I mean, having girls come together and work to lift up heavy materials and things like that made me feel a lot stronger mentally and physically. So There's the scaffolding. Yeah, you know, a bunch of you guys came to volunteer to help build this. Yeah. And oh. It was all girls building this. And this is low scaffolding. And we're lucky. We're very fortunate our community partner let us just roll around the corner and lock it up. Sometimes you have to break it down. So do you guys remember the reactions of people we had in the street when oh, we were yeah. all yeah. building this? <laughs> like. The person came with all the bars for the scaffolding and people were passing by as we were building it and they were just like, oh my gosh, it looks so heavy. And it was heavy. So we were all working, it was like, I think 14 people and we were all putting it together and some people got scrapes, but we didn't really care about it. But it took us so long, but we worked through it. It was great. And it was hot. It was so, it was very hot. <laughs> Agonizing, but um, we all did it and we, did one scaffolding, we had to do another one. Everybody was just like, why? But we did it anyway. <laughs> and everyone, all the guys passing by were just like, you sure you don't need help? And I was like, we're fine, we got this. <laughs> so it was really, it was really an interesting, interesting experience. There was a, well, I don't know if this is a challenge or not, but we had a couple of, um, you know, rude people passing by that a couple of men had said, you know, some offensive things to us about the mural or some people may have questioned why is there no men in this mural and when you try to explain to them it's about um, having pride in women and appreciating what we have. There was an all, ma all male mural making history so this is our little thing you know and um, getting those questions sometimes is very annoying, a little bit of harassing but you know I got past that, we all did and we all learned how to deal with it appropriately without letting it get to arise with us, you know, ne no negative energy was getting to us working together. Yeah. Um, like a couple of little things that weren't that big, but like affected us in a way. Like getting paranoid, painting like the same braid over and over and trying to get it just right. That was really annoying. Or like remixing paints that ran out. Oh yes. Like, mm -hmm. It was hell. But it was, it was fun. Yeah, she's right. Mixing the paint was really hard. And like keeping the paint this way. And then like when we first came in the job, it started like, I think we started at 9 o'clock and we had to pull the scaffolding out, unchain it, take out all the supplies, set everything up, and then that gives like, like an hour where you have to do all that stuff. And sometimes you, miss, you lose the caps for this paint, this paint spills, and what is this way? And it was like, it was really hectic, but we kind of pulled through. And every day we had to put the same stuff away, and like, it was, it was really cool. But us working together, we really pulled it through. We had a lot of positive feedback from people on the street. You guys remember people was walking past and shouting oh, yes. stuff. Any, any anecdotes about that of the positive feedback? Um, yeah, definitely. Who wants to go first? Uh, I remember there was this one lady, I'm never going to forget her. She had, um, she always had a different wig every single day. And she would just come in every day and like, just overwhelming compliments. And um, this lady, she was a little bit, in, you know, that kind of, yeah, a little crazy eye. But it was cool. I liked the appreciation. I liked feeling like I was making a positive change. It was, um, there was these three kids that came by one day and, um, I was painting by myself in the corner, like towards the closer to the project side. And this boy comes and he was like, Oh, what is this? Like, what are you guys doing? Painting? And we were like, Yeah, this is our project. Um, we work for a Groundswell community. And I said, I said that. He was like, Oh, you guys do paintings in the projects. And I'm like, 
no, um, <laughs> we do it everywhere, and you know, you could be a part of this too. Like our mural is for you guys, it's for anyone that passes by and sees it, you know. And he was like, that's so cool, that's so interesting. He started asking questions about who are the people in the mural, and like he learned something new through that, and I learned something from him too, you know. Like he's. I like seeing different people pass by and ask different questions and networking and meeting with different people, you know, and instilling them with something inspiring. Yeah, and a lot of people, they have a lot of good things to say about it. And they were like, wow, you guys are painting this mural for community. You know, they blessed, like, oh my God, God bless you, it's so nice. And actually, we had a, this place called the Gold Street Eatery across the street from us. They gave us 50% off on anything inside the place because they were like so happy that we build this mural. Like when you look out the window of the Gold Street Eatery, you see the huge mural right in front of it. And it's like, it came out so nice and people just complimenting, walking back and forth, taking pictures, asking, oh gosh, how is this? How'd you do this? How'd you come up with the mm -hmm. idea for this? And it's an all girls group. There's like a lot of women and a lot of men, they, they kind of put a lot of positive energy into it. And I felt really good about it. We felt really good about it. Yeah, we owe a huge thanks to the Gold Street Eatery, which is directly across the street from a mural, thanks to Carl. Uh, one of these sort of proprietor manager because a they gave us 50% off on food they let the girls sit in there when because we we transferred to this site it's interesting because um, <laughs> we mentioned there was a making history project uh, the girls we got the gas station so we walked through the there was a gas station and garage so we walked under the cars that were up there's gas there's all this stuff and then the old boys had theirs in a community garden with flowers and trees and <laughs> pink and purple and pretty stuff so we didn't really um, have an indoor place, so this restaurant basically let us hang out in there when it would start pouring. And at, at one point, I'm sure you guys remember, it was um, a Wednesday where the girls have half day, but a lot of you guys volunteered to stay. Poured, we were working on the blue up there before there was orange, and it just, the her face was done, and it just started to run. Yeah. They take a hose or hosing it down, so we're kind of completely soaking wet, covered with paint, walking into the restaurant, so they were just totally nice to us. It was awesome. Um, so any, any other anecdotes about the making of this mural? Weird people on the street. Um, yeah. Like, I want, but I think, yeah. I want to give you props, because like, it was raining hard, and like, she was still outside, through the pouring rain, yes. drenched in water, and like, we were inside, like, you sure you want to come inside? Like, no, we have to finish it. So she's outside, and she was doing that whole part right there. And that's my thanks to you. But, um, Basically, working on the whole project, it was really agonizing, and I think that it was really good that we did the project right side of the eatery, because since we did it outside the eatery, it attracted more attention to their eatery, so just like, oh my gosh, we should go to that eatery across from the really pretty mural that they did, so mm -hmm. now, it's our thanks to them for helping us, so... Yeah. yeah, like that diner was great um, because every time we had lunch, we would all just go and sit in a circle and talk and eat and chat. Like we had two, uh, I guess you would say intervals, like first lunch break, group of girls, second lunch break, a group of girls. But it wasn't like clicks. Like everybody rotated and sat together and ate together. And it was like a little family thing kind of basically. And that was like the best part. It was really hilarious. Some crazy jokes, um, mm -hmm. insiders and funny things, you know. And um, sitting in the restaurant feeling like stars because people passing by saying, we like your mural, you know? Um, another cool thing about the community was the fact that a lot of people who were passing by would like give in their feedback. Like, um, behind her head, the, uh, like the sunrise kind of, yeah, like um, an artist who was passing by suggested we put it in because it looked a little too gloomy, he said. Mm -hmm. So to just brighten it up. Yeah, it's hard. That that's. I thank you for reminding me. Um, we get feedback on the street from passersby that actually changes the mural sometimes. Originally, it's this is all the way on the right side. Then you go left, and it connects. And originally, it was just blue through here. And uh, a gentleman who lived in the building across the street, whose name is Bazaar, uh, who was an artist as well, said, "There's you need you need to carry that orange into the rest of the piece." So we did. Um, and I've worked on other projects where we've had passerbys who are not necessarily professional artists, but just like, I, you know, in all due respect, I know you guys designed this and you thought about this, but here's my suggestion, take it or leave it. So that's how this kind of glow ended up and it really connects it down there um, as well. So um, also this is an interesting neighborhood in transition. Uh, those of you guys who know the former DeKalb Market, which is now gone, 
It's an area where it's near Long Island University, there's the Calb Station, there's a lot of fancy luxury high-rises, and there's NYCHA housing. So we're literally between NYCHA and you know public housing. There was a, the lady with the wigs is from a women's shelter down there. There's a bunch of high schools. So it's a very diverse and interesting neighborhood. So we got a lot of feedback. Also, the, there's a police station right down the street, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other uh, anecdotes about this project? Um, dumping out the water, I guess. Mm -hmm. After cleaning up, we had to like to wash out all the brushes and then pour the water out in a place where it won't get on the street, because then if it was on the street, the police would be like, why are you doing that? And they give us a ticket. <laughs> and we didn't want that, so we'd have to go into the gas station, so we would have problems with Mr. Asai's mom. And she was just like, what are you doing? You're gonna mess up the sink. And we're like, no, we're not. So we had to pour it into the sink or pour it into the drain and then make sure that it was nice and clean. And we would have little spills, so we'd have to get the power hose and like blast it off. But aside from that, yeah. Cool. Um, so we have uh, some other questions just discussing feminism and feminist art that uh, we can talk about. We have some time and then we're going to open up for questions from the audience. Um, so we started in the very beginning talking about the word feminism and the term feminism. So what do you think the term feminism means to um, young women of your generation and how would you define or redefine the idea of feminism? Um, for me, as a young woman, the term feminism means a strong appreciation and pride for women, and, you know, uh, for a woman to have pride in herself as well, and having appreciations for all things that women could do and what we have done, because um, we live in, in such a patriarchal Western society, and you don't see a lot of appreciation for what women could do unless it's with her exposing herself or doing something. So I mean, there's a lot of positive things that we could do and that we we should be exposing, and we could do it through art. You know, that's for me what feminism is. Yeah, for me, fem feminism, I think, is women representing women and, like, giving other women a voice because <clears throat> not everybody has the voice, like, you want to say something, but you can't because no one's going to listen to you. But when you have, like, a group of women, like, helping other women to get out there and expose themselves and show the world and society what they really are, that they're not what you think we are. You know, we're not this, we're not that. We're, you know, we're breaking out of that bubble as, like, the mural. You know, we're showing you who we are. And they're standing up for all women, you know, not just for yourself. But you're standing for all women because women know each other and better than anybody else. So we just want to give them that props, you know. So that's my um, <clears throat> In my opinion, feminism is uh, equality and respect for all women. And um, feminism to other women of my generation, I won't say all, but I'll say some. Women automatically assume that it's like angry, she women who like want to be superior to men. And like, that's really not the case. And I. I didn't think that before this project, but it was like along the lines of that. But after this project, I really came to understand what feminism was. Yeah, a man could be a feminist too as well. Like a lot of people don't realize that it's not about us being better than men. It's not about um, us trying to be superior or like beat down on them or make them shameful. You know, it's about having appreciation for what women could do. Since we do have so much appreciation for what men do as well, you know. Um, it's about equality within each other and not knocking each other down because we don't have enough women, in, enough of us lifting each other up, you know? Um, to me, the term feminism to young women of our generation is a term that isn't really understood. When women hear the word feminist, it's taken offensively because that's how society has forced us to look at it. It is looked at as a man hating woman, therefore it is natural for us young women to be taken offense to it. Um, I, that's how I really, really feel about it. Because till this, when I started with the program, the first question they asked us was, what do you think feminism is? And the whole time, everybody was telling us their explanations, and I still did not con have a concrete definition for the word feminist. Because to me, one person can look at it positively, and the other person can look at it negatively. But at the end of the day, you can't convert people to think the same way. So to me, I don't think there is a solid meaning for the word feminism. It's how you incorporate the word. Excellent. Why do you think it's important to have separate gender projects? Uh, Groundswell has the voices heard every year. Uh, we finally got funding again to have a Making History, which is all guys. Why is it important to have separate gender projects? What do you gain from it? What are the benefits? Um. I think it's important to have an all girls or an all boys project, just like a unisex project, because 
Um, youth within the same gender don't get enough time to spend together. Um, yeah, you have boys that have their friends and girls that have their little friends and this and that, but like on a whole, having like 20 people work together on a learning experience, um, working with the same gender over the summer has allowed me to learn about other girls' experiences and lives and also it taught me a lot about myself. And you think that it's very rare that you could see or find a group of young men or all women working together without any so-called quote-unquote drama or fights. But it's amazing to know that we could cooperate as a team and inevitably built together unity, strength, pride, understanding amongst one another. And uh, we don't see enough of that being portrayed in any society right now, you know. And um, to me, you could get that with working together with the same, like opposite genders, but it's even stronger with someone like you that can understand you and um, help you learn more about yourself. Because honestly, a lot of us had stories to tell and we all were different, you know, so. Um, between women, there's like a well, um, same genders. There's like a natural connection and a closer bond and um, more of an understanding of different experiences um, and situations that they're in. Yeah, feminism, like, when you're working with women, women not only, like, as a group, it shows you that, you know, people are going through the same thing you're going through, and, like, we know each other. Like, you're a girl, we know this. And not, like, like no girly things like brushing hair and painting your nails. But, like, we just know, we know, like, we can express to each other different things that other males probably won't understand because you're a woman and I understand you. I understand where you're coming from. And so, yeah, as Kai said, you know, you think it's going to be drama, you know, but we all came together, and we kind of, we made it work. And... They were really cool. the girls in this group were really cool. So like I think it's positive working with girls and like keeping your same same gender um, groups because like you kind of know each other. You know what you want. You know this and that and like you know each other's minds because you're, you're the same almost the same person. Um, all girl and all boy groups are important because it allows them to get out of their comfort zone and get along with boys or girls that they thought they would never get along with. It allows them to put aside their social differences and f work as a team. And I think that's what Groundswell really challenges us youth to do. And I really appreciate that because in the group, when we first started, there was a lot of people, we would all be divided up into our little groups of people we could relate to. And then there were people that we would never talk to because we were like so terrified to talk to them. It was like, what if she thinks I'm a weirdo? So eventually, we just all got into our little group of love. So when we started working, we had no choice but to talk to each other. And I feel like <laughs> doing that with females and with males, since like outside of Groundswell, men and women will face their own differences and their own troubles with guys and girls. So like, say you have two people who are in the group and they don't like each other outside. And when they came to Groundswell, when they finished, they are like best friends. So. I really think that's the main point of doing all girl and all boy groups, to challenge each other. Yeah, you could be the same gender and there could be so many differences and we had to learn how to work with all our differences, like leave the drama at home, leave your problems at home, come here and work together with each other. If you don't like anyone, I mean, I don't think that happened here, but you know, there are people that, um, sure, before they started working with Groundswell may have had homophobia or like um, some type of rejecting personality some, to something that they weren't uncomfortable with and Groundswell challenges you to, to be around the things you're uncomfortable with. Like I didn't, I would never think I would be speaking in front of people like, you know, I don't, and this is challenging to me, but I like a challenge and you have to learn when it comes to working, you want to get paid, you want to make art, you want to do something, you want publicity, then you're going to have to work for it no matter what and you're going to have to work for your differences and um, in the gender, thing, gender roles and all that, I mean, um, there are projects that were unisex and had both people, you know, genders, and, but this was different, it's a different experience, you know, you could do that any day, you could work with a man or a woman, you could do that anywhere, anytime, but this was a time for us to come together and really make a positive change within a community, so. So, so we have about mm, 15 minutes left, so, um, what issues do you think face young women of your generation today, and, and are there any misconceptions that adults, quote unquote, uh, some of you are, are definitely adults, but in general, the older generation, what misconceptions do they have about women of your generations, and, and again, what issues do you face? 
Well, women face a lot of issues nowadays. I mean, they face issues through centuries. Women were always, you know, looked down upon, and men always had the upper hand. <clears throat> and so, when you're a woman, you know, you're trying to do this, you're trying to do that, and the only way to make yourself look better is if you have what that what that man has. So, like, men are up here and women are down here. And if you try to reach that goal, what that men have, people are gonna, women, people are gonna think that okay, you're so much better. But why can't a woman just be and do what a woman has to do? Like they say, women they should be housewives, they're taking care of your kids, washing dishes, you know, and and being in the house all the time, and not doing a man's job. Like for for centuries, men have been outside and done the work and brought in the food, and women just prepare it. And they don't realize that women they can do men's jobs just as bad, just as good, and even better. And women they're really faced with like societal images and how you think you should look. And they're portrayed in different ways that, you know, it's kind of upsetting, you know, like how society downs women. And, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. You know, you can't just look at the cover and say, you know, I don't like that person. You have to read. You can't just skip to the middle of the book. You have to read from the beginning of the book because that's where you know where their life starts. And you have to go through the person and you'll realize, you know, you're this person and you're not what I thought you were. So you can't just, like, look at someone and say, okay, you know, you're 16 years old and you're pregnant. I don't like you. You have to look at that person. You don't know what happened to them. You have to look at their situation because you never know if you could be in that same situation that they're in. And you have to respect others and don't judge them because you never know what's going to happen to you. So you feel uh, young women still face the same discrimination as women yeah. have historically? Today you still have issues of teenage pregnancy. Uh, what are some issues that young women of, of around your age deal with? Definitely. Um, I think misconceptions that adults or I would say grown folks or people in general give young women young women, the idea that we can't think or do things ourselves without getting hurt, without getting raped, without being promiscuous, without like, you know, going out and never coming back home. Um, this misconception has come mainly from the majority of young women who portray these vulnerable negative qualities. There are too many girls our age and women in general that are portraying this and the thing that makes it worse is too many of us allow it to be portrayed. We have Do you shows. Think the media has something. Yes, like, yes. definitely. Um, the media is what really manipulates. Mass manipulation is through TV programming. Programming means it could alter the way you think and the way you feel. So when women watch these shows and they see like Bad Girls Club, Love and Hip Hop, Basketball Wives, and all this trash, you know, no offense to anybody that watches that stuff, mm -hmm. but when they see that, they go out and they try to reenact these things. And if you say you haven't watched a show and it hasn't made you feel angry, it hasn't made you feel hurt, it hasn't triggered you in any way that got your attention, that's exactly what they want to do. So we have little girls that, that want to reenact these, you know, and care about what these women on TV are doing, and we allow it to keep going on. And, you know, it's funny, who, who's the ones that make these shows, and who's the ones that work on these shows? They're just doing it for money, all these reality TV shows, and um, they portray these ignorant stereotypes about us, got us looking like, um, I'm not gonna, you know, say the words, but have us looking so promiscuous and a lot of us are not like that. A lot of us don't curse. A lot of us don't do these things. So um, when I see that problem and I see that adults complain about our generation, you know, they often forgot who raised it, you know what I mean? So they complain and complain and complain, but we only learn from the example that we see that they are doing. And, um, you know, I, I define myself as a young woman that has a lot of respect. Maybe I have too much pride in myself, so I can't allow that thing, those type of things to represent me. See, I redefine myself and who I am, and I think we did that through this mural, defining who a woman could be. And um, you have to learn to redefine yourself, and that's what we did. Yeah, I really agree with Kai, <clears throat> because when adults look at you, they, they say, oh, you shouldn't do this, you know, they're, they're ridiculing, ridiculing you, but what you didn't realize is that you were a child too. You were my age, you did the same things I did. So like in Kai saying, you know, we're looking at you and you're setting an example. And so we're doing whatever you say, you know? And like when you see these people on TV, you know, it's like they're exploiting their ignorance. And it's really upsetting, like when we look at, you know, like she said, the basketball, basketball wives, you know, you see these women up there and they act a certain way. So you think, okay, they're on TV, they're famous, why shouldn't I act like that too, you know? And it's just, it's exploiting your ignorance and it's exploiting, you know, your, who you are and not just, you know, being simple, being who you really are. You're just trying to turn to someone else because the society says that's okay. And someone says, okay, that's good, you're gonna look like this, you're gonna wear this. And so you're just like, okay, if I'm gonna be famous, I'm gonna be rich, I'm gonna be nice, I'm gonna wear that, you know? You don't look at yourself and say, wait, 
do I really want to be this person? Do I want to exploit myself or do I want to be myself and just grow as who I am in person instead of being what everyone else tells me to be? You know, don't conform to what everyone else is, what everyone else is being, you know, with the, I don't know what to say, but like, just being, you know, what people, what society wants you to be. Look inside yourself and tell you, you know, I'm gonna grow as a person that I am, and I'm not gonna look at that person next to me and say, I should be you, I should look like you, because I wanna be famous like you, because you don't have that. You can grow, you can be famous, you can do whatever you want, because you have that willpower to trust yourself. But you gotta, you know, look inside yourself and not just try to be the, like the person next to you, you know? I think, as young women, we forgot what it is to be yourself. And I think that now we're, try we're learning, we're trying to find out what it is to be a woman. I think we all start off as girls and some women are still girls themselves. And it takes, you have to learn to be a woman. There's a difference between a woman and a girl. A woman knows what's right and what's wrong. She knows how to have pride in herself. She knows how to walk with confidence, and she just, she knows what to do, but a girl is still in the process of learning. And I think a lot of us are still girls, and we look to references to, okay, do I wanna be this, do I wanna be that? What is a woman? And we all thrive to be that. And some women look towards media, and they're just like, okay, she's famous, and she has flawless skin but I don't have flawless skin, so I'm gonna put makeup on to look perfect. And other women look at the women in their family, and they look at them like, okay, she's a confident woman, and she doesn't let anybody tell them what to do. And she has her own job, she pays for her own bills, she takes care of her children, I wanna be that woman. And I think a lot of women are trying to be that, a lot of girls are trying to be that, but they look at other people, and they're trying to be something positive, but everybody's just like, oh, you're not doing this, so you're weird, or you're not fitting into the trend. And a lot of people try to fit into the trend to not be spoken down on, and that's what leads to being something that you're not, which is how, what, what it is on TV. On TV, everyone's just like, oh, I'm glamorous, I'm this and I'm that, but you know you have flaws, but you want to be something positive, something perfect, to make everybody else happy, to bring in the money that you're thriving for. But if we all were what we really want to be, it wouldn't be that way. And we wouldn't be judged upon being pregnant or having body disorders or having self-esteem issues. We wouldn't have that if we had confidence in ourselves to be like, okay, I'm not perfect, but I'm gonna try to be something positive. Not try to fit into what society wants me to be or what the television wants me to be or what guys or girls want me to look like or feel like I'm gonna be what I wanna be. And that's what I guess this mural is trying to tell everyone. Is that just because we're not perfect or because we don't come from a family with a lot of money or just because we don't come from a family that is so nurturing, that doesn't mean we have to continue downing ourselves. We can be something so much better than that if we take the first step. Yeah, she's right like, oh. Marinique, would you? Um, well. Like Jennifer was saying, how like women are being stereotyped and um, told who they should be, and the media is literally feeding into people, women, and um, women are literally killing themselves to look a certain way. Like you should have this type of hair, or you should have um, perfectly clear skin, or this type of body, and this is what beauty is, and that's what they're telling us. But it's like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But now everyone's mind is being sculpted in, into a certain way, so it's all one mindset. Yeah, there's this fear. It's it's more of a fear that if you don't have perfect skin, the guy that you like is never gonna get you. There's this fear that if you don't at least show your cleavage, you're not considered a diva or sexy. So um, I think media instills fear. And I think we've been so brainwashed as a society um, that that's how you have to be to be considered a woman, and it's definitely not. And um, I'm, I'm kind of losing a lot of faith in my generation. I don't want to sound like a defeatist type attitude, but I don't see enough people um, really working on knowing themselves. Before you could even learn or, or gain some type of knowledge, you have to know yourself, you have to redefine yourself. So if you redefine yourself and you know who you want to be, nobody could tell you you can't be that. And um, I don't see anybody trying to help 
teach anyone else their age about that. And um, you know, this generation is what we call indigo. I don't know if any of you guys know Erica Badu. Indigo is like, how do I explain it without getting nervous? Indigo means eclectic ideas and views. This generation, have you guys noticed that history repeats itself? And style, and how do I put this in a way? Style gets reincorporated, like now we're going back to retro. Indigo is the eclectic side of our brains. We're using more of the creative side. So we have a generation of people that have all these ideas and we're trying to get back to that hipster movement, right? But I think we lost what it really means to be yourself as a, as a whole, as a, a woman or a man. And when you lose what it means to be yourself, you're not gonna learn how to redefine yourself. And um, we have gifts, we all have gifts. And I don't see anybody using the gift they have I'll Can I interrupt see. you for a second? Um, how, how would a program like this, working on a mural, doing research, help young women like you find yourself and, and define yourself? Um, like I said, putting you in a challenge, making mm -hmm. you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. Because mm -hmm. we got too comfortable as a society. Um, we got too comfortable with allowing people to redefine who we are as young women, as young men, as youth, as teenagers, you know? And um, that's where the misconception comes from. And we don't respect each other. We don't learn about one another because learning about someone else helps you to learn about yourself. I don't see enough people striving to enlighten themselves. Um, I'm not saying that there isn't any of that. I'm just saying there's not enough. And our mural, honestly, I think, I, I posted pictures of it on Facebook and I did not expect to get the amount of feedback I got from people that weren't even my friends liking my picture of the mural. And I didn't expect to get a lot of feedback from men as well. You know, my friend right here. Were they positive responses to it? Really positive responses. Excellent. I'm so proud of it. Um, I didn't expect to see that much appreciation mm -hmm. from the opposite gender, you know? So, to round up our discussion, because we're running out of time, um, what topics would you suggest for future Voices Heard projects? And also, um, at the end of that, why is it important to support feminist art? Mm. Or you could do either or if you're not exactly sure. Um, you brought up a lot of important topics. Body image, media. How would you distill that into like a, a mural topic? I'm going to tackle the one you said, the first, the first one. Cool. Um, there was a quote, I don't know where I got it from, but it was a quote that said, people are killing themselves without committing suicide. And yes. that quote really means a lot. And I think we should do another topic that means, what does it mean to, to die and to die literally? Because we're walking around and we're just dead. There's no inspiration, there's no hope, and there's no individuality at all. And I want us to do a mural about what does it mean to be yourself? Mm -hmm. Men, male-wise and female-wise, like, not just, I think we should do it with, like, the all-girl, mm -hmm. not the all-girl, but the both, the unisex mm -hmm. one, and we should do that. What does it mean to be yourself? What does it mean to not be influenced by stereotypes, to not be influenced by the media? What does it mean to be you? I think we should do that topic next. Also to love yourself. Yes. Yeah, I think yes. the next topic should be my favorite word, redefine yourself so no one doesn't define you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think it should be separation from the media and like they were saying who you are, separating yourself from that mentality and discovering yourself. Yeah, I think we're all coming around the same kind of topic for it, like being yourself and not what media has said that you are. And I think that, you know, that's a really good topic to show women to be yourself and not look at the person on TV, not look at this celebrity, you know, be yourself and, you know, be true to yourself. I think that'd be a really good I know what we should do. Um, I like I like things that are like sarcastic and paradoxical. So let's do something like, um, you know, make it seem like maybe a TV show. We could take a TV show and we could target it without it being, you know, without us getting in trouble or you're sued or whatever. Mm -hmm. But like, let's let's challenge it and make it seem like we like it but we're against the idea of what it's portraying. Because Bad Girls Club, that, that doesn't define me. Jersey Shore doesn't define Italians. 
um, loving hip hop. It don't have no love and it don't have no hip hop in it. Like, let's just, you know, make it, make it look like what it really is because that's what it is, it's garbage. And we could target it by saying, you know, there's a quote here I have on my laptop. It's called, today's reality, big house but small family, more education but less, less common sense, advanced medicine but poor health, touch moon but neighbors unknown, high income but less peace of mind, high IQ but less emotions, good knowledge but less wisdom, and finally, lots of human beings but less humanity. So let's not, I mean, I know Voices Heard is like an all women's group, but let's just target some paradoxical things that mm -hmm. can make people really think. So cite specific examples from the media and yeah, popular culture so we can comment yeah. on it. Because we all basically mm -hmm. target the media and that, that's the biggest influence on the world. So let's target the biggest influence on the world and maybe create a new influence. Okay. So next summer, mass media, Voices Heard, rips it apart. Excellent. So um, we're at three o'clock, but um, I'm going to open up for questions. Any questions from the audience uh, to any specific person or in general? Okay. I I want to know how you feel when you read that girls are being shot for going to school. You know, do you relate to that? Do you? Okay. Well, when I was a young girl. I never really had much of an education. Like, I didn't really go to school, and because well, a lot of reasons behind that. But I used to live in North Carolina for a while, and I didn't really go to school. You know, I worked on like a farm, and it's kind of it's kind of upsetting to see like education <coughs> is a really big thing, especially for women, and because we want to get up there. And like to hear that someone is shot because we're going to school is like you know everyone is born with the right to an education. It's you know just how you choose to take that path and where you're going to go with that. And to see that, realize that someone you know, is being hurt because they want to be smart and because they want to live and they want to just you know show their get more intellect. It's really upsetting to see someone that you know who who would want you to die because they don't want you to have an education. Education is just like key to everything, and it's gonna get you places. It's gonna get you that degree. It's gonna get you that diploma. It's gonna get you that job and that space in that fashion design school. And just when you don't have it, it kind of sets you back. But to hear that someone is stopping you from getting education. It just, it really gets me upset, it's really sick. It makes me angry, you know, and it also makes me feel a lot more pride in myself because I know why they, they shot the girl, because they're fearing that she's gonna gain the knowledge to break out of whatever she's been trained to think. Mm -hmm. And that makes me feel even better than myself because they're scared that a woman could gain that much strength. They're scared that a young person could gain that much strength. And that just pushes me more to challenge them and I like that type of stuff and the more they try to stop me from learning or gaining any type of knowledge about anything the more I'm gonna do it I'm like a cat in my past life I believe I was a cat because the more I know you don't want me to do something that I know is good for me or the more I know you don't like me I'm gonna challenge you and I'm gonna do my best to gain that knowledge and like I said knowledge is power the more knowledge you have about yourself first is the more you could control things and they know that knowledge is a control um, tactic. The more knowledge you have, the more you could control, and they didn't want that little girl to gain that knowledge to control, because she must have been very smart and enlightening, but they're going to get their fair share of that anyways, so. Any further questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, I guess I am so impressed with the end product. The mural is beautiful, and I can just see the whole community benefiting. But I'm also so impressed with all the skills you all learned. You know, your thought, your evaluation, your your collaboration, um, you know, just so many things, not to mention the, the painting skills. And, you know, so I guess I heard all of three of you say that you were going to go into graphic design and graphic yeah. design. What about the mural? You know, you saw the impact that it had on the community, on the people on the street, you know, every man, woman. Um, are you confident enough to go out and paint your own mural to, to cap them? You know, a similar project in Haiti or China or Australia, you know, bringing it back to the aspiration you expressed at the beginning, or do you need more training? Um, I don't think you need training to do art. No, I'm just talking about <laughs> oh. murals. Murals? I think murals. Like, Definitely. Yeah. I think that's what I would do as a hobby. I don't think it's not able to be done. I think we're going to do that. I think we'll do it in our own ways, whether it's through Groundswell or whether it's not. 
I feel like I think gr- it will have to be groundswell job to like. I think after we like get more people in groundswell, we can go international, which is what I think we should do because we can't just sit here in New York. There's more <laughs> issues everywhere else, so I think. Though we we each have our own talents, when we came to grounds, we all came in with our own style, our own talents. But we can't just do it ourselves. We take grounds well too, because they brought us here. So it would take grounds well as a group to get to a massive size, and then eventually it's divided up into little groups and go to Australia and go to Africa and go to Haiti and places like that, and share their awesomeness with the world. So I think within the next five years that could be done. Maybe yeah, five. Three yes, we are always <laughs> fundraising, so if anybody, uh, we accept credit cards and personal checks to groundswellmural.org, uh, please send us to Haiti to do a mural, that'd be awesome. So. Please. Any final thoughts, young ladies, or any further questions from the audience, comments? You're welcome. Thank you. So, there's a four... Again, I'd like to thank um, Jennifer, Dakota, Marinique, and Kai, four young women who will be leaders in the future and will not be fit into uh, uh, Mitt Romney's binder. Right. So, <laughs> and it was an honor to work with all of them, and I hope to work with you again.